This video introduces vectors. A vector is a quantity with direction and magnitude. Magnitude is also called length. Vectors are usually drawn with arrows. The tail end is called the initial point, and the tip of the arrow is called the terminal point. Two vectors are considered to be the same if they have the same direction and the same length. The position of the vector, that is where it's drawn on the plane or in space, doesn't matter. Please pause the video and decide for each pair of vectors, are the two vectors equivalent? The first two vectors are equivalent because they have the same direction and the same length even though they start and end at different points. The next two vectors are not equivalent to each other. They have the same length, but they point in opposite directions. In fact, if we call the first vector A, where the decorative arrow at the top is a way to represent the fact that it's a vector, then we'll call the second vector, the one that has the same length but points in the opposite direction, we'll call it negative a. The next pair of vectors also are not equivalent to each other. They have the same direction, but they have different lengths. A scalar is another word for a real number, like five or pi. A scalar does not have a direction in contrast to a vector, but it does have a size or a magnitude. Now that we've defined vectors, we can talk about adding them together. If we have a vector a and a vector b, we can define the vector a plus b as follows. First, we move the vectors so that they're end to end. In other words, the terminal point of a coincides with the initial point of b. Then, we draw a straight line from the initial point of a to the terminal point of b to complete the triangle. That's our vector a plus b. There are other equivalent ways to find a plus b. For example, we could move our vectors a and b so that they share the same initial point. Then we draw the parallelogram with sides given by a and b, and the diagonal of this parallelogram is the vector a plus b. If we superimpose our two pictures, we can see that they really are equivalent. This is also a good way to see that a plus b is the same as b plus a. Later, we'll see another way of defining a plus b in an algebraic rather than a geometric way. It's also possible to multiply scalars and vectors. If we start with the vector a, then the vector 2a goes in the same direction, but it's twice as long. The vector negative 3a goes in the opposite direction because of the negative, and is three times as long. The vectors I've drawn are only rough approximations. To get a more accurate drawing, I'd need to use a ruler, or place my vectors on coordinate grids. In the next part of the video, we'll be using coordinate grids for our vectors. In two dimensions, if we place the initial point of a vector a at the origin and find the coordinates of its terminal point, which we're calling a1 and a2, then one way of representing the vector is with angle bracket notation. In other words, we write the coordinates of that terminal point, a1 and a2, in these pointy brackets, and that completely defines the vector as long as the initial point is starting at the origin. When we use this notation, the numbers a1 and a2 are called the components of the vector. In this figure, these two equivalent vectors can both be described in angle bracket notation as the vector with components 1, negative 2, because the version of the vector whose initial point is at the origin has a terminal point with coordinates 1, negative 2. We can also talk about vectors in three or more dimensions. In 3D, vectors will have three components, 
please pause the video for a moment to find the components of the vector that starts at the point 3, 1 and ends at the point negative 2, 5. By moving the vector so that it starts at the origin, we can see that it extends negative 5 in the x direction and 4 in the y direction. So its components are negative 5, 4. In fact, we could have predicted that without physically moving the vector. The difference in x-coordinates tells us how far the original vector extends in the x-direction, and the difference in y-coordinates tells us how far the original vector extends in the y-direction. So we know our vector should have components negative 2 minus 3 in the x-direction and 5 minus 1 in the y-direction, which is just what we got before. And in general, the components of a vector that starts at a point x1, y1 and ends at a point x2, y2 are x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1. A similar statement can be made for vectors in 3D with three components. We can also talk about vector addition and scalar vector multiplication algebraically. Given two vectors, a and b, and a scalar c, we can write a plus b by adding the components together. Similarly, a minus b can be found by subtracting components. And the multiplication c times a can be found by multiplying c by the components of a. Similar formulas hold for three-dimensional vectors. Many of the properties that we know and love from arithmetic still hold for vectors. For example, addition is commutative. a plus b is the same as b plus a. Addition is associative. We can group in any way we want and still get the same answer. There's a zero vector whose components are all zeros. And when we add zero to any other vector, we just get the original vector. Vectors have additive inverses, or negatives. And when we add a to negative a, we just get the zero vector. All components become zero. Just like in arithmetic, we have distributive property for multiplication over addition. And a second distributive property, if we add two scalars and multiply by a vector, we can distribute that way as well. Scalar multiplication is associative and can be grouped in different ways, still getting the same result. And there's a scalar multiplication identity, which is, you guessed it, 1. 1 times any vector is just the original vector. We've already talked about the lengths of vectors when they're described geometrically with arrows, but what if we have a vector that's described in terms of components. How do we compute its length? Well, if we move the vector so that its initial point is at the origin, then the vector with components v1, v2 will have a terminal point at the point v1, v2. And so using the distance formula, or the Pythagorean theorem, we see that its length is given by the square root of v1 squared plus v2 squared. Note that we these absolute value signs here mean the length of the vector. Sometimes people use double absolute value signs instead. Similarly, the length of a vector in three dimensions with components w1, w2, w3 is given by the square root of w1 squared plus w2 squared plus w3 squared. Again, based on the distance formula or repeated applications of the Pythagorean theorem. The length of a vector is also called its magnitude or its norm. A unit vector is a vector with length 1. Sometimes it's handy to rescale a vector so that it still points in the same direction but has a length of 1. Rescale means multiply by a scalar. So we're trying to multiply this vector v by a scalar to give it a length of 1. How do we do this? Well, if the original vector had a length of, say, 
4, then we'd have to multiply it by 1 fourth to give it a length 1. And in general, to rescale a vector, w, we need to multiply by 1 over the length of w, and then we'll have a vector of length 1. Please pause the video and find a unit vector that has the same direction as the vector with components 5, 1, 3. Well, since the length of the vector is given by the square root of 5 squared plus 1 squared plus 3 squared, that's the square root of 35, we need to take our vector and multiply it by 1 over the square root of 35. That can be written in components as 5 over the square root of 35, 1 over the square root of 35, and 3 over the square root of 35. And for our final set of definitions, the vector denoted i with components 1, 0 and j with components 0, 1 are called the standard basis vectors in two dimensions. If we draw our coordinate axes, the vector i is just pointing in the x direction and the vector j is pointing in the y direction. Notice that i and j are unit vectors. Similarly, the standard basis vectors in three dimensions are i, j, and k. These point along the x, y, and z directions, respectively. In this video, we talked about vectors represented by arrows or by components. We talked about adding vectors both geometrically and component-wise, and we define unit vectors, including the standard basis vectors, i, j, and in three dimensions, k.